Welcome to the Chef's Bar, a front row seat for a family-style feast thrown down by me, Craig Harding, and my fellow chef and restaurant owner, Rob Rossi. Each week, we'll invite three special guests to hang out at the bar and watch us cook up rustic dishes inspired by our travels abroad. Okay, welcome guys. We have Sienna DeCampo, a key player in the slow food movement when she's not rocking out on Toronto stages. We have Grant Van Gammer of Bar Isabel, recently voted Canada's best new restaurant. Hey guys, Bye -bye. Deck. Also, we have Ben Cook, singer, musician with the bands Yacht Club and F***ed Up. Guys, thanks for coming. We're doing a, a little Roman cookout here. Rob and I are gonna tag team it. All family style. What are you gonna do to get a drink around here? <laughs> Do you guys want a beer? Yeah? Please. Okay. So what we're having today is uh, we're gonna do four courses. We're gonna start with a, a primi, a spaghetti alla matriciana, classic Roman dish. Uh, then Rob's gonna work on some smelts, fry them up, really simply done. We're gonna do quail salt in boca, and then we're gonna finish off with a local Ontario peach crostata. Yeah, first. we'll actually do that first because obviously we need a little bit of time to cook, so. Well, I think if you wanna cut some of this lattice, yeah. And I would, you know, do it about half inch, three quarters of an inch. There's, there's not really any anything okay. to it. It's whatever you feel like. And this kind of recipe is simple because the almond the almond dough is really easy to make. It's just easy to work with. The dough is, is very soft. Yeah. It's good. I do have some almond cream. So it's, again, it's like sugar, butter, uh, a few eggs. And we're going to spread this on the bottom. We're going to put some local peach kind of jam. We're just going to kind of get this lattice on there. I like Italian desserts because they t often tend to be you know, not too sweet, and they uh, use a lot of fruit as well. Love it. What does saltimbocca mean? Saltimbocca, Grant, that's a good question. <laughs> saltimbocca literally translates to mean jump in, in, in your mouth, and that's just because of the... In um, reference to the flavor. Yeah, in reference to the flavor. Today we're doing it with quail, but you can do it with veal, you can do it with like all, all kinds of... You can even do a fish saltimbocca, like why not, why not like... Jump in your mouth? Jump in your mouth. Literally. I'm ready for something to jump in my mouth. I'm <laughs> starving. Are you? Okay. I put some of the almond cream down. I'll just kind of get some of this this peach on there, and then Craig's going to lay out some of that lattice. You make sense of it a little bit more. So we'll spread this out, and like I said, it's pretty basic. Like you don't, you can use anything you want. I think you could probably even just fill it with almond cream. It still tastes delicious. Yeah. You can't fill it up too much either because it kind of expands, so you don't want it to kind of leach out everywhere. Rob, how long are these things going to take in the oven? I think uh, 350, maybe 30 minutes. Oh, that's perfect. Maybe even a little bit less than that. Maybe have a little bit more balance to it. So we'll just we'll just quickly egg wash it. But you don't have to do this fancy lattice work. You really could just cover the whole thing. Just cut a couple air holes in it and throw it in. 350, convection. If you don't have convection, that's fine. It's just gonna kind of speed it up a little bit. I just like, uh, you know, I love their, awesome. the focus the Italians have on food, how important it is for them, yeah. you know? And it doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to be, they just place a lot of importance on like sitting down and eating yeah. and making that a big part of their life, right? Yeah. And we, we don't do that often enough here. Well, I think the best thing about Italian cooking is they, they don't buy things from other places. No. That's the, the, the one true thing about it. They just use what they have there. If they don't have it, they don't cook it. Totally. This is really interesting traveling like through every little small city and big city in Italy. It's just different. You know, you're only getting tortellini in one city. Yeah, and then exactly. You move to the next one, and all of a sudden yeah. it's uh, carbonara. You know, I yeah, had about yeah. six carbonaras like in four days in Rome when I was there, and it was just like you know too oh, much. But... All the restaurants in Rome serve exactly the same menu. Yeah, yeah. they're all busy. At the end of the trip that we had last year, we did this cookout for a bunch of friends that we met there. Two Canadian guys cooking for Italians, trying to recreate their dishes. And I think we did a pretty good job. No, we did a great like, job. They we did a cacio really, pepe. Yeah. Like some beautiful salads. We had some puntarelli. It was great. Like we did, oh, we did a, puntarelli. Yeah, yeah, we did a, a bunch of different things. Right. Um, yeah. So guys, I'm gonna do a dish that we've what we've had on a campagnolo forever. If I ever take this off, people complain. It's I've the spaghetti. It. You've had it? I've had oh, it. Wicked. You've had it a few times. A few times. It's I've even good, had a takeout. It's a good staple. It's a, so it's a spaghetti alla matriciana. So that's a, a classic dish from the countryside from a place called Amatrice. We've done a fresh egg noodle over here. To start the, the pasta off, it's gonna have guanciale. Pork, it's a jowl, okay? So this is the cheek of the pig. And, and always, um, Pecorino. Again, this is like the, the cheese of, of, of the area, you know, the, 
In northern Italy, where they have much greener pasture, that they have a lot of cows. From Rome and south, they that's where the sheep are. Yeah, and it's so a they, sharp cheese. Yeah, Very it's a sharp, sharp cheese, and it really, you know, I, I would say in some cases, I would say in a dish, okay, you can just substitute with parm, but this is an example of a dish where you really need to use pecorino. Do you guys make the guanciale at your restaurant? Yeah, we do. I can smell it from here. It smells delicious. I yeah. mean, the thing with guanciale and stuff like this is, it's just like again, it's one of those really cheap byproducts. It's like, you, what do you have left over with the pig? You got the head. Leave it to the, the, the sort of the working class of the, the more peasant people to cure this up and make that the basis of a dish, right? It's not even actually the cheek, it's just the fat that covers the cheek, right? Yeah, like really, because the cheek's just that small little yeah. muscle, yeah. This will satisfy in any way. This will satisfy in any way. The guanciale is rendering out the fat's coming out like, like it would with bacon and it's getting a bit crispy. Probably get going on this. Fresh smelt here, their ocean smelt. Okay, so for the flour, you don't have to do anything fancy. I just season it with kosher salt. We're trying to keep it simple because it's it's a Rome episode and, uh, well, they don't do anything fancy there. Is it because they're lazy? They could be a little bit lazy. Yeah, they don't want, they don't like to overcomplicate things. No, they don't. Because you know what? Part of eating is also entertaining and having fun yourself. Another really big part of this pasta is really, really thinly sliced garlic. So I guess we can start dredging some of these guys. Yeah. Just to be safe too, we'll just do it in, in smaller batches and knock off some of the, the flour too because obviously your oil is gonna get pretty pretty dirty. So we'll just drop these guys in. All right, so I'm gonna add the garlic okay. in at this point. The wok actually works well. The wok just, works very well. The oil is so clean, we're just looking for a bit of, just to get them golden. The crostata, maybe we'll take a look at that as well. It's been about 10 minutes, I would say. Okay, great, yeah, so we're gonna rotate this. Looking good, Rob? Yeah, it's looking great. A little bit of color. Yeah. yeah. Okay, get that going. The guanciale is crispy, it's fully rendered. The garlic has a nice, toasty, slightly brown quality. Ben, it, it, I mean, you've been all over, right? Like, you've traveled, you've done the whole rock thing, the tours. Like, you have enough time to eat when you get out, or do you, do you just, are you not stuck on the, like, the tour bus, or how does that work? What do, you, what do you think? It's usually kind of on the go, you know, driving eight hours a day, but my favorite culinary experience in Italy was just traveling on the highway and like this like little gas station and I ended up having like just a simple like pomodoro dish for at like 10 a.m. It was like 45 degree weather like we're all in our like you know bathing suits just like dying and like w hoping for something amazing and like these people are just like inviting us into their cool. gas station and like it was beautiful. It's a beautiful memory. So with the smelts, even the, just the sound of them frying is like calmed down so most of the water's coming out of them. So we know they're crispy. And that's kind of a good thing too. Like as chefs, you always like pay attention to like the audio side of cooking. Okay. As always, you gotta season them as soon as they come out. So I'll get a little bit of salt. Yeah. I'm not really worried about pepper. Before I add the tomato sauce back in, I'm gonna put some dried chilies or pepperoncino. This is just a very simple tomato, pureed tomatoes cooked out. It's one of those things, it's sort of become like a staple, you know? Everybody has them, you know? You had the you had some staples at your first restaurant. Yeah. What, what were they? What are they now? The whole octopus. The That's whole amazing. octopus. The whole octopus and the, uh, the ceviche, whole fish ceviche. That's the thing about restaurants. The, the customers tell they, you what, they kinda, they what your, what your uh, classic, uh, you know, what your staple is, right? And then you can never remove it off the menu. It's funny, all this talk about like, you know, different inspirations and cultures, like you, you've opened up this restaurant based on uh, some inspiration that you've had. Tell me about, tell us about that. The last 10 years I've been cooking Italian and then uh, after traveling last year to Spain, I just kind of engulfed myself in uh, really just the culture. You know, just yeah. like Italy, it's like old people are hanging out with young people, you know, yeah. on the streets, drinking, eating, sharing stories. And you know, that's kind of what we really wanted to bring to our restaurant. This pasta can be modified. Where they first started it out in the country, they would use spaghetti, but now in Rome, it's quite popular to use bucatini. I still like it with the spaghetti. So we make our spaghetti fresh. It's an, it's an egg noodle, so it has uh, egg yolks and an Italian double zero flour. So just like in Rome, it's just a pile of fish. And that's essentially what they did there. Excuse me. Okay guys, so we have some fried smells with a little bit of lemon and some parsley. You. What, are you, what are these two gonna eat? <laughs> be great. I gotta get in there and try it. Have you guys put the lemon on? No, oh, yeah. not yet. Seasoned perfectly. Chef. Thank you. Now that it's been in there for about four or five minutes, I'm gonna drain it. I'm gonna, res I'm gonna also take a little bit of the pasta water in there, okay? 
just has a little bit of starch and it will help the sauce kind of adhere. That's a, that's a big sort of chef trick, eh? Is using a bit of pasta water to make sure that the sauce binds with the noodles. Okay, great, yeah, so that's it, guys. Oh, wow, that looks amazing. Pretty simple. Wow. Well, just let it cool down, or obviously you don't want to eat when it's too hot, it's just gonna fall apart, so. Maybe I'll raise up the heat a bit, get it really going. Yeah, grab that. Finish the parsley in here. Cut a little bit more yeah, parsley. cut a little fresh one. The sauce is where I want it, okay? I'm gonna do one, one last little bit of olive oil. You, you add oil in stages, like you season in stages, Absolutely. you add the oil in stages. You know, it's all, it's all about building like great flavor throughout the, the course of cooking the dish. All right, so it looks really good. So Sienna, what's the connection with your father and the slow food movement? Well, food's always been a very important part of our family. Seven years ago, we went to the slow food convivium which was in Torino. Oh, that's amazing. So and, cool. And it was, it was the best time of year to be there as well because it was in the fall, so it was truffle season. Wonderful. It was just two yeah, weeks of- Yeah, wine. Yeah. That's awesome. Is your father Paul De Campo? Yeah. Oh, all right. I was like, slow food, wine, Paul De Campo. There you go, makes wow. sense. Sienna De Campo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're ready to eat this. We're ready to eat the spaghetti. I think the other thing too, you have to be careful with the seasoning, the salt, because the cheese is salty. So obviously Craig is a professional. He knows what he's doing. But if you're at home, you should be, you know, understand that the cheese has, you know, quite a bit of salt in it. As with everything we do, we finish it with a really nice olive oil. Okay, guys, spaghetti alla matriciana, up on the chef's bar. So Grant, do me a favor, give it a nice little mix and then uh, and divvy that up. Is there like a prerequisite of how many inches of cheese you need to have <laughs> on this dish? Is that there like... is, and I'm actually thinking... Because I've, I've never put so much cheese on there, but it looks delicious, so... I honestly think I'm gonna have to add more cheese, so once you get... I think you should add cheese right now. Okay. Do it. Perfect. Why the, those, why the hell not? It's, it's just the noodles on top that get all the cheese, so... I guess it's important that people don't ever buy that pre-grated stuff, right? That's all well, rind. Apparently it's not even Parmesan. No. <laughs> no. It's not even real cheese. I, oh, I gotta get some. So what do you guys think so far? You've all been to Rome. Do we do it a justice? 100%. Nice. Really nice spice, you know. Awesome. You know, the thing about Rome is that it's not always fresh pasta. No, it's not. You the know? dried pasta is good too. No, it is, but you can really taste, you know. Yeah. Like this was yeah. made like earlier today, yesterday, you know? Yeah, well, super great. We're doing it because that's what we want to eat and we like it, right? So. Exactly. It might, maybe it takes a bit more effort, but I tell you guys, it's really, it's worth it. And you can taste that, so. I'm it does, we can taste that. Um, well, so, while you're doing that, let's tackle the last of the dishes here. Yeah, guys, you ready for salt and boca? Yes. yes. A little quail, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna always just, we'll just lightly season it because we're gonna do the sauce, the prosciutto salty, so we'll just do a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One of the key flavors here is sage, and it's very strong, so you gotta use it sparingly. You actually grow a lot of herbs, don't you? I do, yeah. I feel like those were stolen from my garden, Craig. They were? Craig lives right by my house, and yeah. I have this garden, and every day I'm, <laughs> you know, my garden is on the way to Craig's restaurant. I, so. I've picked, I've and certainly then, picked Thai flowers. I've definitely woken up and there's things missing out of the garden. The sage is in there, the prosciutto is wrapped on the outside. Yeah. We're gonna fry this up in butter, and then we're gonna build a quick sauce out of it which I think is our little twist on it. We're gonna add some capers. We're gonna put a couple anchovy fillets in there. We're gonna, we're gonna dredge these in just a tiny bit of flour. You know, when you start getting into Northern Italy, they use a lot of combination oil and butter for cooking, okay? So I'm gonna keep that tradition alive today and a couple of mobs of butter. I think too, don't, don't worry too much if these fall apart. If you try to make it perfect, you're gonna mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It's true. And you see a lot of like nonas and older people cooking, they don't care what it looks like and the food always tastes better for some reason. No, we have this joke at the restaurant, we get a little too fancy, we say, no, what would Nona do? She wouldn't do it like this, so why the hell are we bothering? I, yeah. think, I think that's where I forget about it. Yeah. Them, right? Like, oh, forget about it. So you can smell the butter's getting a little bit dark, which is nice. Watch your eyes, Sienna. <laughs> And obviously, because you can eat these a bit pink, you want to get the color on them now because they're still going to cook in the sauce a little bit, so you don't need to mm. try to cook them all the way through. 
Basting is nice because some of the surface area of this top layer won't have touched the oil, you know, and won't have had a chance to crisp up. I gotta say, basting is one of my favorite things to do. Eh? Yeah, it's nice, <laughs> especially when the butter gets foamy. Yeah. You guys, you guys look like master basters. <laughs> That's a good one. That was fresh. I'm gonna pull these out, okay? And then we're gonna build our sauce. It's a great idea, actually. It looks delicious. It's like really nice and simple. A little bit of shallot can go in. A little bit of garlic. Nice. And then a little bit of sage. A couple Maybe. of cubes of butter. Yeah. Even, you know what, just a tiny little. And I think, too, because these capers are really cool. They're like full berry. We'll just throw them in. Wow, this is really looking great. Oh, yeah. Okay, so those guys are in. Uh, salt, I don't think we need any salt. I will put a little bit of, because you need a little bit of liquid or else. And some wine, eh? We're going to deglaze. And some wine, yeah, we're going to deglaze. Open right there, perfect. Perfect. So, just a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Sweet. Good. Now, the key too, now, if you want to bring the butter and the wine together, you've got to kind of twirl your pan around or get your tongs or a fork in there and just make that emulsion so that the sauce will come together. A little bit of olive oil. Pepper. What I'm gonna do? I don't think I, I don't think I'm gonna toss these back in there. I'm just gonna put them. Pour it over. I'm gonna pour it right over. Pour it over. Yeah. I'm gonna keep life simple because we all want to eat. Parsley. A lot of sauce here, so I think I'm just gonna. And this is like true home style, like building a sauce in a pan. Ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It looks like a. All right. There you go, guys. Quail salt in boca. Put your prosciutto and your sage and your uh, aromatic herbs in there. Enjoy. Stop always cooking for people. <laughs> <laughs> I never eating from this dinner. <laughs> I know I was drunk at your restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's just. Super juicy and super delicious, guys. Mm -hmm. Cool. Really nice. It's too bad you don't have this on your uh, restaurant menu right now. Uh, you know what, Julian? Huh? Maybe next week? It's like the littlest, like, forgotten about bird. It's true. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Always bring the caper berries home from Italy if you're going there. Are you Italian? No? Do your background? I don't know. My family's from Britain. The lowest form of <laughs> cooking. <laughs> This literally took 10 minutes. I know, it's crazy, right? I just like all the garnish with it. Grant ate all the garnish, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, chef. Were you guys really nervous cooking for Italians in Italy? Not really, Italian we cook, we, I think as long as you're cooking and you, you have like an intent to please people, you're gonna cook well. If you're scared, then you, I don't know. You, as long as it's Italian in Italy, you're fine. Exactly. Well, the thing is too, we took, we did some fairly ballsy dishes too. We did the ketchup pape. I know, this is like it's a- turned out beautiful. You're talking to pasta with And we did like, that in a wok. We did it in a wok, that's We right. cooked it in a wok, it was great. A little bit first, a little bit at a time. There. Ketchup pepe, a little bit of olive oil, lots of black pepper. Your woks are Italian. Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, and My mom used great, to so. For yeah. deep frying, yeah. How old did you go, right? We should bring the walk back. We should bring the walk into the Italian professional kitchen at the restaurant. Looks great, Rob. Thank you, buddy. I have more coming. It's sort of like a cacio pepe, but I've added zucchini flowers. So pecorino, black pepper, zucchini flowers, okay? I remember, you remember this? We were in that outdoor market and we were looking in the butcher's fridge and there was that perfect little box of quail. Yeah. There's a little quail there. Let's see quail. Okay, On the barbecue? Get all of them. Get all of them. Okay. Sono pulite di. Si, bone and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Flash it. So we thought, perfect. We'll bring the quail home, we'll debone it, and we'll grill it over charcoal, nice and simple. This quail was so... Yeah, it was very fresh. Very fresh, eh? Yeah. <laughs> a 
Okay, guys, you ready for dessert? <laughs> yes. yes. Of course. All right, let's do this. Oh, so I still can't. Gonna line up some plates? Yeah, I got them here. I'll do my best not to destroy it. <laughs> so, are you happy with your croissant on here? Yeah. Like the thickness? Yeah, it's good. It's tender. I think that's you know the biggest thing. As long as it's tender, it doesn't seem to be tough. Really nice. It was like so easy to make. Like it literally took you guys like three yeah. minutes. Yeah, and of course. It looks like some old woman slaved over it for like four hours. Right? Anyway, so you can see the layers. You see a little bit of the almond cream and some of the peach. Should I just dust a little uh, icing sugar on there? Yeah, and the thing is too, like I don't like making this too fancy where you actually make individual ones. It's nice to have a slice of it. <laughs> I mean, this is just the perfect little sundae. Apparently, it's peach is Ben's favorite, so. Is it? It is my favorite. It's not like the Mackinac peaches. We just met, but I know that already. But. Yeah. <laughs> I've been whispering to him. <laughs> Piece soon. <laughs> it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. I mean, that says a lot about a dessert. Dessert should be nice, nice and balanced yeah. too. Yeah. A little ice cream would be nice, creme anglaise, whatever. You pour custard over it. The pastry is almost like a shortbread. It's really sandy and crumbly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's to your point. You know, it, it, it's tender. Yeah, you can. It's, it's easy to work with. You just play around with it. And if you make a mistake, you can form it and do whatever you need to do. It's perfect to get with a coffee too. And then his coffee washed down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or a glass of red wine. You know? Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> sexy bite. That's a really sexy bite, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for having us. You're very, very welcome.